Tongues is more of a gift, amen? It will come, amen? It will come. If you seek Him, it'll come. But it'll come at the appropriate time. That night, He filled me with the Holy Ghost, amen? And with power. And what that did, it changed my life. I wasn't just backward kid anymore. We began to sing in a gospel group and sing 20 years in a southern gospel group. And then I got married and working in church and working in ministry. And God didn't begin to use me. He said, I'm going to call you a preacher. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Whoa. I'll sing. I'll lead the choir. I'll work with the youth. I've done all those things. But I'm not going to preach. That's not what I'm doing. But God has a way of making us understand that His plan is better than our plan. Amen. You ever been there? That His plan is better than our plan. And so I had to give in. Joyfully, I gave in. Amen. And I announced the call to preach and God began to work in that area. But there's times in my life that I can go back to. I remember sitting in a Baptist church. And I, I've never let the domination stop me. Amen. That's a man-made wall. If I feel compelled, I'm going to go worship. Amen. Uh, the denomination doesn't bother me a bit. Amen. We're more of an interdenominational spirit filled church in Chattanooga, but I've never allowed a wall of the denomination to stop me. Amen. Sometimes I don't like me when I get there because I'm just going to obey God, but I've never tried to let it because that's the man made stuff. We've got to try to get the man made stuff out of the way. It's hindered the church long enough. Amen. But I remember sitting up in a spirit-filled Baptist church and shout around. Of course, they didn't speak in tongues. They, they would lay hands on the seat, but it was not like I liked and what, 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 kind of, what I, I tended to be drawn to. But it was a good church. It was a spiritual church years ago. And this guy, I'm sitting there, and this guy, I've never met him before. And since I've been in that service, I've never met him. But I will never forget this message. Why? It was a defining moment. It was Joe Arthur was his name. And he preached on the Rose of Sharon. Yeah. Heard him preach many times, but this, this man preached on a bit annoying. And I, I have never forgotten that message. There's been many messages that I've forgotten that I've said under the preached word. But this message I will never, ever forget. Why? It was a defining moment in my life in my walk with God. And I believe this weekend that God has stepped in your life. And He's given you a moment you can pin down. This changed my destiny. This, this weekend, this service that came from heaven, you don't give me any credit, it all came from God. But this service this weekend, something that was said, a song that was saying, a word that was preached, has totally changed my destiny with God. And you can pin it down. And it's sometimes good to pin it down. This state, God said this and God done this. And so it keeps you focused on the plan God has for your life. Because if you don't stay focused, if you don't operate in vision, Without a vision one, we perish. Not only as a corporate believer in a corporate church, but in our individual life, if we don't have vision, we will perish. So sometimes it's good you write it down. I tell my people that if God speaks to you, write it down. Remind yourself what God said He's going to do. Amen? Because God's not a liar. Amen? He's going to fulfill His word. Sometimes we forsake the word. We got to stand up, move the law with the valley and the work of the Lord. For as much as we know, our labor's not in vain. Your labor's not in vain, child of God. But sometimes along the way, we get knocked down. Have you ever been there? And I want to preach you a message during your Psalms 37, and I'll try to, my best to, to go as quickly as God will allow me. It won't keep you long. I've had a great time, and I love to preach. I love to sing. love to fellowship. What an awesome church this is. Sing, there's so much talent here. Preach word anointing, and that's the thing. Amen. That's the thing that sets this church apart from probably the many churches in this area is the anointing. Because there's not many churches you can go into today where you can feel the anointing. You can hear some good singing, you can hear some good preaching, but that's all it is if it's not anointing. Come on now. Come on. Yes, Lord. But when you when you factor in the anointing. That changes everything. Because that means someone that comes in lost shouldn't leave lost. Someone that comes in burdened shouldn't leave burdened. Why? Because the anointing breaks that yoke and it breaks that yoke uh, many times of formality to where they can step out of their comfort zone and come under the fountain of God and receive what they need at that point in time. Amen? So I always pray and I always strive God more than anything when I walk through those doors, more than anything, more than my song being sung, more than me getting to do what I want to do. God, let the anointing rule and reign in this house. Yes. Because that's going to change people. 
people's lives. Amen. Amen. So I want to preach to you this morning a, a very simple message. The power to get back up. Because many times we're knocked down on our journey. I've been there. And I'm sure you have as well. Psalms uh, 37, just to kind of lay a little bit of a foundation in verse number 23. The Bible says in Psalms 37, verse number 23, the steps of a good man and a good woman are ordered by the Lord. That lets me know that He's already planned a path. Amen? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and He delighteth in His ways and Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and I am now old, and yet have I never, never, not have I, have never seen the righteous, the, the righteous forsaken, nor his seed pay for him. Never. I've been young, and I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, or God's seed begging for him. If you say this this morning, Brother Donnie, I'm, I'm saved and I'm a child of God. Amen. You're a part of this righteous. Right. You're a part of it. Amen. What does righteous mean? It just means live right. right. Just live right. Just do right. Love. Amen. Love your neighbor. Love the folks that don't love you. Right. Righteous is just doing what is right. Amen. So the power that we're not now we're already told here in Scripture that God holds us up. But I'm going to give you three three things the power to get back up. Let's turn with me this morning to, to Luke chapter 10. I just want to read. We've got some Scripture that I want to read, but I want to get through this because I want to leave this with you. Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. Verse number 25. We'll start there. We'll kind of go through this. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and, and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? It's Luke chapter 10, verse number 25. He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, This do... And thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said, Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down to Jerusalem, to, from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves. They stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. I've been there. Not literally, but spiritually. I've been right there. Where I'm going right along and thinking everything's good and all of a sudden a storm comes, situation comes. And I find myself being stripped and laying there to die. The friends I thought that would be there for me were nowhere to be found. The prayer, prayer partners and prayer warriors I bore with in prayer before and war with in intercessory before couldn't be found. My family that I knew was going to stick by me no matter what. What minutes were the fall? I fell among these. You said the enemy, if he can trip us, if he can stall us, and if he can get us to give up, he'll delight in that. Right. So that's what happened here. Jesus is speaking. I've been there. Fell among thieves. 31, and by chance there came a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. God help us. But how many times do we get so busy? And I, I'm preaching, I'm speaking out of the pastors and preachers. How many times do we get so busy we miss that opportunity to help somebody? I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. We get so busy in our thing, in our life, that we sometimes miss the opportunity. We miss that hurting one that's just right there. God help us. God help us. So here it is. We came to preach. He didn't stop. Likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed on the other side. Still didn't help him. But a certain, a certain Samaritan, I don't know, 
As he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Thank you, Jesus. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And when on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pens and gave them to the host, and said to him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. And even goes further, which of these things thou was neighbor unto him that fell among these? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. And Jesus said, Go and do likewise. The power to get back up. Sometimes the way you're going to get back up when you're in that spot and you feel forsaken and you feel forgotten is going to be by the way of a stranger. It's not going to be the way you expect it. Sometimes we're expecting a pastor to pick us up when we fall. Or maybe we're expecting our friends or our family to come by and pick us up when we fall. But I'm telling you, don't, don't never rule out that God is going to send somebody in your path that you don't even know the power to get back up. Sometimes come by the way of a stranger. That's hard for me to grasp because you know what? I, I'm kind of hesitant. I don't know this person. But honey, I'll tell you what, when you're in a desperate place and you're needing help, sometimes we close out the person because we don't know them that God is trying to use to get us back up. I'm talking about the power to stand back up again. The power to get back up because it is so vitally important that you get up. You can't lay there anymore. God can't use you in this space. God can't use you in this place that you isolated yourself to. You're dead. Just, that just no 